I'm joined with Rick Mazur from Form Energy Metals here at the Commodities Global Expo 2024. Rick, thanks for joining us. Hey, nice to be here. <laughs> <laughs> so we just recently interviewed Rebecca, your geologist with Form, and uh, that did quite well on social media for us. Isn't she great? She, she's, yeah. she's, got, she's got quite the following. She's going to make us very rich people. So Rick, I'm going to ask you the same. The, a similar question to what I asked Rebecca about the recent sentiment change towards nuclear power. We're seeing Amazon, Google, Microsoft all come in with deals related to nuclear power, small modular reactors. And I'm just curious here, when you look at it, at it somebody who's worked in uranium for decades and you sort of see the sentiment shift, how, how shocking is it to you? How noticeable is it to you? And do you find that when you're just going out in public and having conversations about uranium and nuclear power with people that the attitude has shifted over the last couple of years? Yeah, no, it certainly has. Um, hey, listen, uh, yeah, I have been in this business for a long time. Uh, you know, the first wave uh, of, of uranium exploration came when the Arab oil embargo happened in 1973. And that was uh, that. That created an energy crisis. Four hundred over four hundred nuclear reactors were built in in the United States. The second wave was um, the Chinese nuclear build, and that that was from two thousand and four to till twenty eleven. Unfortunately, which got cut short with the accident in Japan. But this one is different. This one is different. It's climate change. It's security of supply issues. And it is uh, definitely, uh, definitely the, go the, the Google. Yeah. So, so, so I'm going to put on a piece of tinfoil hat on my head. I, I don't have one. It's a figure of speech, if you will. But uh, there's always been sort of these ideas and things we hear about that there's special interest groups that really kind of attack nuclear power that maybe came from big oil. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, when, when, when I think about that, and I think about big tech getting involved in nuclear power, mm -hmm. to me, if that's true, and there were special interest groups that were sort of fighting it, that's gonna be really hard for them when you think about companies like Google and Microsoft and Facebook and, 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 and these, these big powers at play that actually can regulate social media. Do you, do you think that, 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 that there was this sort of special interest group that was sort of shifting the, the viewpoints of, of nuclear power? No, no, I don't think so. I think, uh, you know, the whole net zero 2050 thing, that's, that's what's people, people are, are looking at it logically, like, how can we do this? Mm -hmm. And now they recognize that nuclear power is, is one of the ways to go. So in 2021, when when... Uh, after COP28 and all, all, all those uh, global policies were, were coming uh, available, SNC-Lavalin, which is now called Atkins Realis, okay. they do a lot of engineering work in I, nuclear. I didn't realize they changed their name. <laughs> it's called At Atkins Realis. And, and uh, they did a study, engineering net zero, like how are we going to get there? In Canada alone, they felt or they, their studies showed to meet net zero here in Canada alone, we're gonna need uh, 115 site sea dams, like in British Columbia, which floods up all the rivers. Are we gonna flood 115 rivers in Canada? No. They can build 20 Bruce Power plants, which uh, will, will supply the same amount of en energy, small, small footprints or 380 small modular reactors, like the one that they're building in Darlington uh, right now, or 20,000 wind turbines. That's, what, that's what's needed to meet the, the climate goal targets that, that, that our policymakers have made. Is it achievable? Oh yeah, you're asking me. I'm asking you. <laughs> I, I like to me, it's 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 totally obvious what needs to happen, uh, and I I can't really wrap my head around why we suddenly ha had this freak out after Fukushima to oh, we got to shut down nuclear power. You kind of look at what happened in Germany, where 
you know, uh, electricity prices are through the roof after they shut down. New no, they, they're realizing they're fo uh, folly now. <laughs> but, but we still don't see it. Like when we see the data on, on the people of Germany and how uh, much they're in favor with nuclear, like it's, it's, it's still not overwhelming. Like, like I, I believe that like now it's the majority are back in favor of nuclear power, but it's not like 90% or anything. I, the, the last stats I saw, I think, were slightly above uh, 50%. So, like, like there, there still is some of that, but... Of course there is. Yeah. Just like today's election in British Columbia, where it was uh, a 50-50 split. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, there, there's always going to be controversy about nuclear energy. Uh, what we're, what we're going to see is slowly... Nuclear power is, is, is going to grow. Mm -hmm. It's going to replace coal. It's going to replace oil power generation. It's amazing how much uh, power generation is in the world is by oil, yeah. if you can believe it. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, it'll, it'll take time, but it's going to happen. Yeah, and, and, and getting back to the big tech uh, sort of moving in on uranium, or sorry, nuclear yeah. power. That's an incremental thing that just has come out of the out of the blue. I just yeah. sort of but, gave you the yeah. the demand scenario, yeah. Yeah. you know, but, but, for just but, regular. One interesting point somebody made to me last week at Red Cloud was they said to me, "Now that you got big tech in, it's going to move a lot faster because you've got big, big, big money behind it, and they can move." Uh, political landscapes more so than say if it's just a small group of micro caps out of Canada. Point well taken. Pause. Yeah, they 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 could certainly they certainly have the following of the general populace. Yeah. And I think that I think I, I think you agree that I think you're right. I, I would agree that I think they're going to change, help change the sentiment for nuclear amongst the younger, younger generation. So uh, again, last week we spoke with the lovely uh, Rebecca uh, and she gave us the, or the, the, the overview on, on form, uh, but for our audience who's following the uranium story, maybe you can give us the Rick Mazur overview of form energy metals and sort of how you would describe the company for any uh, uranium investors that are unfamiliar. Yeah, well, we're building the next big uranium district, like the Athabasca Basin, uh, in Nunavut, through our exploration activities on our Aberdeen uranium project. Uh, we believe that there are, there are a multitude of uh, deposits there to be found, right next door to what is already an existing uranium deposit, a Rano's 133 million pound Kigovic deposit. With the, with the need for North American supply of uranium, with the fact that the Chinese uh, have just struck a deal with the uh, Kazakhs to, to take a lot of their uranium uh, into their, in, to, to fuel their nuclear fleet, they were smart. Mm -hmm. The Western world, is pretty slow in, in, in figuring this all out. So exploration is gonna be very important here in, in North America, and we need big deposits. Not, not, we, need, we need a lot of little deposits too, but we need the big deposits, and I think that's what Forum uh, is, is on the verge of, it's after. of demonstrating. Yeah. And it, I appreciate you saying that because when I think about uranium exploration, we see some of these companies that are, you know, tiny little microcaps in Canada and they may have a little bit of a following on social media, but then you see the drill results that they're going after and it, it's kind of it, like uranium's not like gold where you can just kind of get these tiny results and, and get excited about it. I think that if you're investing in a uranium explorer, you, you've got to be investing in companies that are going after that next aero deposit or that next sort of yep. fission style deposit where we're talking about really big grade, really big scale. Uh, it, You've been in this for a long time, and do you think that, 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 that you have to find that in order to actually get something that, that is going to get regulated and get financed to production, that you have to go out and find something that's comparable to those kind of assets? Well, listen, you, you, <clears throat> there's not many places in the world where you can find those large deposits other than in uh, unconformity-related type deposits, which, which 
uh, we're looking for in the Thelon Basin in, in uh, Nunavut. 300 million pounders are, are hard to come by, but they're out there. All, what we need, and the problem is right now, is a lack of capital mm -hmm. to conduct exploration to, to find these things. Otherwise, um, if we don't find new deposits and uranium is, 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 is going elsewhere, not staying uh, here in North America, um, our nuclear power plants are going to be shutting down and uh, we're going to be without power. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so, Rick, if I'm an investor in Form Energy Metals or I'm watching the story and I've got my, my watch list of uranium names I like, mm -hmm. what am I looking out for out of the company over the next 12 months? Forum, of course, is the number one. Um, yeah, I, what what the we're, we're just getting results in. I think Rebecca mentioned that in her, yeah. her, her, her last interview. We're just getting results in. Uh, we think that they're very promising, promising enough for us to uh, to go out uh, to the to our investors and seek more capital to go back in there next, uh, next summer and uh, drill some more and expand these, uh, these deposits that, that uh, we've, uh, we've glommed onto. And uh, more importantly, and I think Rebecca pointed that out as well in, in her last uh, interview with you, I haven't seen it yet, but uh, we're, we are looking for that next gen. We are looking for that MacArthur River and we do believe it's there somewhere. We've got well over uh, 20 targets to, to evaluate that we think have that kind of potential. And, and, and I have to say, I mean, we've worked with uh, Atha Energy and had Troy Beaujolais on a bunch of times who famously found that next gen deposit. And I don't know how vocal he is about this when he comes on camera, so he might be mad if he's watching this right now. but. I know he loves the Thelon Basin and says that the, that the Thelon Basin is where that next asset's going to be found. So I think it's great you guys are exploring there too. Yeah. Uh, well, we certainly agree with Troy. Um, I think Troy agrees with us. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we're, we're all uh, up there working together, um, truly trying to find uh, the next uh, big uranium mining district uh, in Canada. Something that will be generational, that will supply uranium for 50 years, just as the Athabasca Basin has since it was first discovered in 1968. Well, Rick, thanks for hopping on here, and let's continue to chat as you guys bring in some results over the next year. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>